Somebody asked me, will functional programming... Uh, well, let me read this. It says, uh, so he says, Steph, here's a suggested video. Steph, is functional programming a better alternative to OOP and why? Uh, all right, so let me just get into it. So functional programming is a style of programming. I may have touched on it, although I've not actively studied it. If you write JavaScript, you're probably going to implement that kind of stuff. It's conceptual more than anything else, I would say. It's basically a flattening of the code programming paradigm, and I agree with a lot of the ideas behind it. With functional programming, they're trying to simplify things by eliminating some of the complexity that you might see in object-oriented programming. So I'm reading a piece here. It says, there are a lot of ideas in the innocent-looking definition above, which needs to be understood before you can begin to grasp the meaning of functional programming. So they, they cite these uh, five elements, pure functions, function composition, Avoid shared state, avoid mutated state, avoid side effects. So actually, a lot of these things, principles, by the way, I agree with in terms of uh, object-oriented programming. Like, I don't like, uh, I like composition rather than inheritance, so as function composition, I would imagine. Uh, I don't like uh, sharing state. I like keep things fine-grained. I talked about that in many, many videos for years and years. Avoid mutated states. Um, that's... Um, you see that a lot in object-oriented programming where um, the values held in an object can change over time. I, I'm trying to uh, keep this at a very high level and simplify. So the, the main point of this video is to say, is functional programming going to replace OOP, object-oriented programming? I don't think so. But I think that uh, there's functional programming is a methodology. I think you'll see it used uh, continuously uh, and it's an interesting uh, set of principles to follow. And again, I'm not uh, a functional programmer, although I, I would imagine that I've, as I said previously, I've implemented some of those concepts. Yeah, there's a lot of things in object-oriented programming. Well, several key things that I don't like. I don't like inheritance. I don't like it at all. Uh, I prefer composition, which I, I can see in functional programming. I like function composition. Functions is just a... In, in object-oriented programming, functions are just called methods because they exist within the, con within the scope of an object. Uh, they don't like shared state. Again, I like that as well. It depends. You know, I think uh, for me as a developer, I always I implemented what I might characterize as object-oriented light. Uh, again, I didn't like using inheritance. I preferred composition over inheritance. Uh, I kept my... Um, code, I kept it less fragile, unfragile, by not using a bunch of the uh, uh, bells and uh, whistles and the tricks that you could do with object-oriented coding. Uh, I think it was kind of a nice compromise there. Anyway, talking a little bit of gibberish, bottom line is, will functional programming replace object-oriented programming? Uh, no, I don't believe so. But I think that there's something to be said about functional programming in terms of uh, ideas, in terms of how to write code. And, uh, but I don't think that object-oriented programming is evil. I just think that you have to use that tool, uh, the object-orientedness of languages. You have to use it with some discretion, not going crazy with fancy and complicated uh, hierarchies and your object hierarchies. Uh, trying to keep uh, your state model, if you will, simplified. There you go. That's my uh, two cents on that. Same thing, even with, you know, when you get into object-oriented program, they'll get into a lot of, uh, like I remember in the Java world, we used to have a lot of complex, you can get very complex in terms of just error trapping. And I remember at one point in time, I was going down the error trapping, uh, the try-catch model. You see that in JavaScript, try-catch. It got very complex where you're trapping all kinds of different types of errors, and your uh, error trapping code could be far more than the actual original functions itself or methods itself. So I would use targeted error trapping as opposed to some broad generic error trapping, which is, could be useless. But there was a balance to be achieved there. So there you go. I hope that helps. So yeah, you know, do you run out and learn functional programming? I would put 
that in the need to nerd category of tech, um, if there's a job that requires functional programming, learn it. Maybe learn some basics of functional programming because it can help you out with your major programming. But I see for a foreseeable future, OOP will be the dominant software development uh, methodology, if you will. So yeah, there you go.